Hey guys, Data Ombre here, and um, in this video we're going to be upgrading my Mac Pro 2010 to better, faster CPUs. Now this uh, Mac Pro already has two times six core 3.06 gigahertz CPUs, which are of the Westmere uh, Xeon class, and uh, they're almost the fastest one available out there. Uh, there's just like one more variant that's faster. That would be the two times six core clocked at 3.46 gigahertz. And uh, really for practical reasons, there's no point for me uh, to even do this for a mere, um, you know, 400 uh, megahertz uh, upgrade per core. But I did uh, uh, get a chance to uh, find these like, new CPUs really, really, really cheap at uh, on, on AliExpress. So I couldn't resist to kind of like uh, truly max out the horsepower and the CPU capability of this uh, timeless computer. So let's get to it. So guys, um, this is going to be a quick and dirty upgrade. Uh, nothing too fancy. Basically, uh, what we want to make sure is that we have some thermal paste. So I bought MX4 um, Thermal comp Compound uh, by Arctic, and uh, it's rated for eight years durability, which is uh, pretty good. So um, that will ensure that the CPUs that go inside are cooled for about uh, eight years in the, into the future successfully. I have my CPUs that have arrived from AliExpress, and to be able to um, access the old CPUs and pop in the new ones, I will need this uh, hex key. Uh, and I'll show you how that works in a second. So this is a three millimeter by 150 mil millimeter hex key uh, that can go into the right holes, uh, reach the uh, screws in there and uh, unscrew and screw in each of them as needed. So uh, let's get to it. What a beautiful computer this is, guys. Uh, Apple certainly does not provide uh, upgrade capabilities as they once did, uh, especially with their um, professional line Macs. Recently with the 2019 Mac Pro, they've improved upgradability, uh, but honestly, compared to the uh, original cheese grater line, uh, they don't come close to uh, how easy it is to expand them. So check this out. To access the internals of this bad boy, all you need to do is uh, pull this uh, flap to the side, and then this entire case comes off, the side panel that is. And in here, we can look at the internals of our Mac Pro. So as you can see, I've already done some uh, major upgrades to it. I've got uh, four SATA 2 hard drives inside. They're each three terabytes in size and they're in uh, RAID 0. So I just use them for uh, data that's not too important. Anything like uh, movies downloaded off the internet, stuff like that. Uh, stuff that I don't really care about. If I lose it, uh, what I do care about is the RAID performance. Um, and then we have uh, Radeon, Radeon 580 um, 8 gigabyte uh, card inside uh, by MSI. So this is a huge upgrade. Um, graphics capability is just uh, tremendously boosted by this card. And uh, I'm not sure if you can see inside, in addition to that, I have a um, NVMe card right here. It's uh, mounted on a PCI um, Express card. So that's my boot disk. It's a two terabyte uh, Samsung card, as well as USB-C card here, which provides uh, external USB-C compatibility. And as you may see, I need to feed internal power to that card so that it can work uh, stable. On the back of the unit, we can see my USB-C ports right here. 
and here's the um, graphics card. Okay, so the CPU tray, it needs to come out. It's located uh, at the bottom of the unit and it's uh, held in securely by these uh, tabs, which need to be pushed in on each corner like so. And uh, this will release the CPU tray out. I'll try to do this. Uh, I think I actually need to use both hands to pull this out. Uh, so you would be pulling with each hand from this side out and up and the whole tray should uh, slide out. So I will be right back as soon as I do that. Alrighty, so here's the CPU tray, it's out. You can see how modular and uh, convenient uh, this is to take apart. Really, really well designed by Apple. Uh, it's uh, important to give credit where credit is due. Um, so what I'll be doing now is releasing the heatsink um, for each CPU by putting my hex screwdriver in and unscrewing each of these screws which will release the heatsink and uh, enable it popping up. I will uh, come back as soon as that's done. All right, so one of them came off quite nicely. And uh, as you can see, there are traces of the old CPU paste, which was uh, applied originally that uh, looks uh, quite dry. It's uh, located both on the heatsink and on the old CPU as well. So um, it's important to have this uh, cleaned up properly with uh, perhaps some uh, rubbing alcohol or uh, isopropyl alcohol uh, and uh, Q-tip, and uh, that will ensure that new paste can be applied on a clean and smooth surface. Um, since you're doing this, uh, it might be a good idea to use a can of compressed air and just thoroughly spray the motherboard uh, on the CPU tray, perhaps as well as the rest of your Mac if needed. Uh, same thing goes for these uh, grills here in the heatsink and the any fans that you see that are enclosed there as well, uh, just to make sure that everything is uh, clean and uh, tidy. So uh, I will proceed with removing the next one and then we'll move on to taking out the old CPUs and putting the uh, new ones in. Okay, now that both uh, CPUs are accessible, once I remove the heat sinks, we can proceed to remove each CPU out of its uh, enclosure. So basically um, what you need to realize here is that there's a little bit of a, there's kind of like a cradle that holds this in place and it's locked. To unlock it, there's this little notch that you need to kind of like pry out and release. It kind of like has a spring mechanism, so it might pop up kind of like how it did and uh, hit me on the hand. You just got to be gentle and careful. And then this little door will open and your CPU is now ready to be released. Um, I'll just make sure that I kind of uh, do a little bit of uh, <laughs> electric discharge as best as possible by touching the uh, case of uh, the Mac Pro. And at this point, I will reach in and uh, get the CPU out. Actually, before I do that, I will make sure that I know exactly the correct orientation of how the CPU needs to be inserted. Uh, it's pretty difficult to screw this up, but there are some indicators uh, like this arrow in the top left hand corner, which uh, indicates how the CPU should be oriented. All right, out it goes. It's the old one on one side. And then I'm going to do the other side. It's the same thing. There's a notch to release. Ooh, it just flies out. I've got to be more careful. 
probably not do it when uh, holding a camera <laughs> in my hand. It helps to uh, do this with two hands, folks. And there's the uh, arrow that indicates the orientation of the second one. So I'll go ahead and remove this one as well. And uh, we are fully prepared now to put in new ones. Okay, here are the new CPUs that have arrived from AliExpress. So I'll go ahead and open each one of them out of its case and uh, proceed to install. All right, so here's the end result. Heatsink number one, completely cleaned. I use Q-tips and uh, isopropyl alcohol, almost 100% pure, uh, to clean this up with. And uh, there's a second one, clean, as well as the tops and sides of the new CPUs are completely clean. These are bought used from AliExpress, so they came in pretty, like, I would say like 95% clean condition. They did have some residue of their old thermal paste on top of them, so I needed to make sure that that's completely clean. And uh, at this point, I can pop them in and uh, seal them up. Okay, so the first one's going in. Making sure that the... First of all, let's check out the... Let's check out the bottom and just make sure that it's completely clean. That I'm not going to be trapping any particles of dust residue at all. Looks pretty good. So we'll pop it in. Yep. It's sitting as uh, it should. And at this point, I can close it up. So this uh, needs to fall in. And uh, now I can drop it in for a close. All right, so we're gonna proceed with CPU number two. Looks pretty good on the underside. No dust particles or anything trap underneath, so pop it in. All right, it's secure as well. All right, applying thermal paste on CPU number one. CPU number two. Now, um, some people like to actually close up the heat sink right at this point on top. Uh, what I like to do is actually spread this around to make sure that it's uh, nice and even. I know that the heat sink pressure will kind of do this uh, as well as soon as the heat sink sits on top, but uh, for, for my own personal preference, I kind of like, like to do it myself just to kind of like see it and make sure that I've uh, added just the right amount of compound that I didn't sort of like undersize it or I didn't uh, overestimate it. Okay guys, so here's what I uh, kind of ended up with. So if you look uh, at each CPU, it's a very thin layer of thermal paste that I've spread around. Uh, you, don't, you don't need to make it thick at all uh, because uh, you want to make sure that it's uh, 
kind of like a thin effective layer that's going to be sitting between the CPU surface and the heatsink surface itself. And that way the heat will be conducted as efficiently as possible. So thick layer, not needed, a very thin layer that kind of looks like uh, what I've done here is uh, recommended. And I will be popping uh, on uh, the heat sinks now. Okay, everything is uh, back the way it was and assembled as far as the CPUs and the CPU tray goes. And I'll pop it back in now and uh, we'll do a power on test and see if everything works as it should. All right, guys, uh, excuse the mess underneath the table. This is just like a quick test location. So I turned on the Mac Pro and it has uh, successfully posted. I've logged into my uh, session here, uh, OSX Monterey. Uh, basically, what I've done here is uh, I've uh, patched the Mac to be uh, able to run OSX Monterey through OpenCore Patcher. So it really becomes uh, usable when it comes to a more up uh, updated uh, Mac OS. Um, as of this time, it's not yet. Uh, it's not yet able to upgrade this Mac Pro. Uh, I think uh, five point one uh, line to OS X Ventura, but the Open Core Patcher team is uh, working hard at it. So if we look over here, and if we go to about, voila. 2 times 46 gigahertz 6 core. So it worked. Awesome. Top of the line Mac Pro 2010. Thank you so much for watching, guys. And uh, if you like this kind of content, please uh, subscribe and uh, give it a like. I'll see you guys in the next video.